Hello everyone. This video is about what are smart data domains and its propagation. The agenda for the video uh, would be what are smart data domains and why is it used? How to tag smart data domains to catalog objects? How to propagate smart data domains to similar columns? And a few references. What are smart data domains and why is it used? Smart data domain also known as example based data domain operate without rigid rules. Unlike the traditional data domains, smart data domains can be created dynamically by the user over the EDC catalog and tagged directly to the catalog object. Users simply need to associate a column with a relevant data domain which is then automatically propagated to similar columns. Once a column is tagged, similar columns can be identified and the data domain can be propagated to the similar columns. Let us now learn how to tag a smart data domain to catalog objects. For the sake of demonstration, let us consider a table named V underscore customers and let the table have four columns. Let us consider uh, customer ID uh, as a column and if a user wants to tag a smart data domain to this particular column, we can come uh, to the data domain section in the EDC catalog over here, click on edit and over here in the add data domain, we can label the data domain. Let us for now keep the name as dummy DD. Okay. And we can click on add. If there is any data domain group that you wish to tag, then you can select so from the drop down. Otherwise, we can click OK. As you can see, the data domain was successfully accepted by the catalog. Let us now close this window or you can also choose to click OK. As you can now see, under the data domain section for the customer ID column under V customers, we can see the smart data domain named dummy DD tagged. Now that we have learned how to tag the smart data domains to a column or any object on EDC catalog, let us learn how to propagate. This slide contains a simple workflow that will explain on how to propagate the smart data domains to similar columns. The first step involves create and execute the two or more source resources. The second step would be to create and execute a similarity discovery resource and group the possibly resources that may contain similar tables or columns. The third step would involve creation of a text file defining the data domain and the factors for comparison or propagation. The final step involves uploading the created text file to the data domain propagation resource in the LDM admin and run it. Let us now see a demonstration of the same. As observed from the workflow diagram, the first step would involve creation and scanning of the source resources. Here, I have created one resource named ORASIMRES1, which is an Oracle resource trying to scan a table. During the creation of the resource, I have added the connection properties which involves the username, password, host, port and services. After performing the test connection, I have moved on to enable the extraction of source metadata uh, for uh, the table named employees under a schema named VKAVISA. Additionally, it is important to enable uh, the data discovery by adding all the relevant details of the DIS and selecting the source connection. Further, an important point here would be to enable the similarity profile data preparation and value frequency settings. Here, it, we need to enable uh, the run similarity profile uh, so that this resource ORASIMRES1 is available for selection when we create the similarity discovery resource. Further, a similar uh, resource has been created with the name ORASIMRES2, 
which is also an oracle resource type wherein we are scanning a different table named jobs from the same schema. Here as well we have enabled the data discovery given the details of the DIS where the profiling is intended uh, to occur and added the source connection uh, name. It is important that we enable the run similarity profile option here as well. Let us now run both these resources. We can now observe that both Orasim Res1 and Res2 have completed their execution successfully. Moving on to the second step of the workflow which is to create an Informatica Similarity Discovery Scanner. Here I have named the resource as Demo Similarity Discovery and I have grouped our two resources uh, over here. As you can see the names are Orasim Res1, Orasim Res2. Moving ahead to the metadata load settings, we need to enable the similarity discovery and also check on the features that need to be enabled. You can choose between name, pattern, unique values or all of them. Let us now save and run the resource. We can now observe that the demo similarity discovery resource has completed its execution successfully. Given the fact that our two Oracle source resources have completed their execution. This is the EDC catalog uh, page where we can now check the results of the scan. I have opened a column named job ID under the jobs table of resource named Orasim Res2 and tagged a smart data domain called test. This test data domain is intended to be propagated to our tables or uh, the columns that are similar to job ID in the resource named Orasim Res1 which contains or brings in the table named employees. The third step in the workflow of propagating the smart data domains involves uh, creation of a text file which contains the name of the data domain along with the factors for propagating the data domain. Here we can see that we have created a text file uh, and added the name of the smart data domain. Along with it we have also added the factors for propagation in its abbreviated form. Here N indicates the name of the data domain, P indicating the pattern, U meaning the uniqueness of the uh, values within the column whereas VF stands for the value frequencies. This file will be used and uploaded onto the data domain propagation resource uh, which is a system resource in the LDM admin. We can now use the created text file uh, in the data domain propagation resource. You can navigate to the LDM admin and look for the data domain propagation resource. Come to the metadata load settings. Click on edit. Here you can observe that there is a field named enable, enabled similarity types wherein it allows or accepts uh, the users to upload a text file. You can here upload the created text file. Once you have successfully uploaded the text file, please go ahead and run the resource. We can observe that the data domain propagation resource has completed its execution successfully. It is now time to view the results on the EDC catalog. Let us now open the EDC catalog and look for our resource named Orasim Res1. As you are aware, Orasim Res1 had scanned the table named employees. Let us open that and look for the job ID column of the table. Here in the job ID table we can now observe that the test data domain which is a smart data domain is being recommended with a percentage of 91%. We can choose to accept or reject it over here. 
Since we had run the similarity discovery resource, we can also observe the similarity uh, similar columns over here, which is a job ID. Let us check if this job ID column belongs to our resource orasimres2, which comes from the jobs table. As you can now see that the job ID from the employees table has directed us to the similar column of orasimres2 uh, table jobs and here we can observe our smart data domain which was originally tagged a couple of minutes ago. This is how you can propagate smart data domains from one column to the other. Coming to references. The first link gives us a detail on what is data domain discovery and an introduction to smart data domains. The second is about creating smart data domains. The third is about choosing factors to propagate smart data domains. We now come to the end of the video. We would love to hear back from you. Please reach us on our email or the Twitter handle. Thank you.